Hello, my name is Mahadeva Mahesh. I'm the Chief Physicist at Johns Hopkins Hospital. I'm also the Associate Professor of Radiology and Cardiology at the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. Today I'm going to talk about understanding dose display in CT. Next slide. At the end of this talk, the participant should be able to identify different dose descriptors in CT, recognize the CT dose displays in CT and also able to compare and contrast various dose descriptors in CT. Next slide. Um, the CT dose display can be looked into two different groups. One is a pre-scan display which is usually available at the time of CT scan and when the technologist is setting a CT scan and a post-scan display that is available at the end of the CT scan where the dose information is tagged along as an image and also available as a DICOM header. Next slide. Before going to the details of understanding the dose display, it's important to understand some of the factors that are influences the radiation dose and image quality. Among the factors that influence image quality and radiation dose, we can look into primary three different groups, primary group, secondary and other groups. Among the primary groups such as tube current, tube voltage, pitch, image acquisition and the scan time are the primary factors which have a direct impact on the radiation dose and also on the image quality. The secondary factors such as reconstruction algorithms, or display field of view, scan field of view and so forth have an impact on the image quality directly and in a way some way have also have an impact due to the radiation dose effects also. Other factors include patient motion, patient size, detector efficiency, operator training and experience which have an impact on the overall radiation dose um, to the patient. Next slide. The key dose descriptors in CT are computed tomography dose index wall with a unit of milligray and dose length product also um, abbreviated as DLP and the unit is milligray centimeter. How is CT dose measured? CT dose is measured indirectly on the patient. We do not measure directly on the patient. In fact, CT dose is measured using phantoms. Phantoms are materials which mimic human tissues. By measurement done on the phantom, we use that information to kind of estimate the risk on the patient. Next slide. Shown here are the standard CT phantoms used for CT dose measurement. The larger of the phantoms called the body phantom is a 32 centimeter lucite with holes drilled in it which are used to place the iron chamber typically 100 millimeter length chamber inside this uh, phantom while doing the measurement. The second of these phantom is the 16 centimeter diameter um, called the head phantom. These two the, these two phantom, the 16 centimeter and the 32 centimeter phantoms are historically used as the standardized CT phantom for a lot of the measurements which are now available on the CT scanner. Also we use a 10 centimeter diameter lucid phantom called as the pediatric head phantom. When you look at the dose uh, distribution in this phantom, uh, next slide, when you look at the dose distribution in the phantom, we see that if the object size is small, the measurement done on the surface is same as the measurement done at the center. However, on the other hand, if it is the larger uh, uh, phantom, such as the body phantom, the surface dose is almost twice that of the central phantom. Because, because of the variation in the surface dose compared to the central dose, um, the measurement done at, at different location of the phantom is variable. Therefore, that's accounted in the um, the, the development of the CT dose descriptors. Next slide. In this slide shown here is the how the uh, CT measurement done at the periphery and the surface are taken into account uh, and uh, deriving at a new parameter called CTDI weighted. It's the weighted computer tomography dose index number which is a, a sum of these two-third of the measurement done at the surface plus the one-third of the measurement done at the center. Together, this accounts for the CTDI weighted. When the CT acquisition is a helical acquisition, the concept of pitch introdu is introduced. In order to account for this uh, pitch concept, a new definition of the CTDI is defined. 
and that's called the CTDI wall, which is a ratio of the weighted CTDI divided by the pitch. Next slide. Pitch is defined as the ratio of the CT table feet per gantry rotation divided by the total beam width. The radiation dose in a CT scan is inversely proportional to the pitch value. If the pitch value is very small, the radiation dose is higher. If the pitch value is very high, the radiation dose is lower. So there is an inverse relationship with respect to pitch and the CTDI. Next slide. So the commonly we measure CTDI using a 100 millimeter uh, ion chamber and it's noted as CTDI 100. It's used in the standard phantoms to measure the, um, the, the dose index number or the scanner output both at the center at the periphery. From this in, uh, information or the measurement, we, me we calculate CTDI wall, which is not direct measurement on the patient, but it's a measurement done on the fan. Next slide. Uh, these are the common CTDI me dose metrics used in the CT dosimetry. Um, however, as of now, the key dose descriptors are now confined to the last two of these, such as the CTDI wall, which is a unit of milligray, and the DLP, the dose length product, which is milligray centimeter. Next slide. The next two slides shown pre-scan display from various CT manufacturers. The first one shown here, along with the various CT scan parameters, you also see the CTDI wall. Um, this particular manufacturer also displays the type of phantoms used in this particular value measured, which means um, if you are doing, if you are, if the technology is setting an ab adult abdomen CT protocol, the CTDI wall should reflect to a 32 centimeter body phantom. At the same time, if the technology is setting a adult head CT protocol, the number displayed here should correspondingly reflect to a 16 centimeter head phantom. Next slide. In this slide is a pre-scan display from a different manufacturers. In this particular uh, slide shown here along with the CTDI wall, the, um, there is also a planned DLP is displayed on this particular screen. What is the use of a pre-scan display? Um, for a technologist who is setting up a scan, if he or she knows a general sense of the CTDI volume number for a particular CT protocol, then he or she can just indirectly verify whether the technique set is correct. Because if he or she is accidentally changes a technique, such as the KV or the MA or the pitch value, these will immediately be reflected on a very high or low CTD volume. And that's why it is important that um, the user should become familiarized with the pre-scan display. Next slide. The idea of the whole uh, CTD wall or the DLP is to utilize this information to calculate some type of a risk to the patient. Shown on this slide is uh, the end information is to calculate the organ dose or the effective dose value. To arrive at this, we use what is called as the CTDI 100, that is the, the dose index number measured on a standard phantom using a 100 millimeter long ion chamber, from which we calculate CTDI weighted or the CTDI volume from, and also, when you multiply that with the scan length, we arrive at what is called as the dose length product. The dose length product is then used for estimating some way of stochastic risk or the organ doses for, the, for a patient uh, in a CT scan. The effective dose is then estimated um, using computer software or using conversion factor. Uh, when it, most of the computer software uses Monte Carlo simulation programs. Uh, one such example is the impact calculator um, shown here in the next slide. Uh, in this slide shown here is the, um, the front-end interface of the impact calculator which is using uh, a standard um, adult phantom of geometric size organs and the user can provide inputs such as the technique factors and the calculator will then estimate the organ doses and the effective dose overall. Next slide. Um, there are also available well-established uh, conversion factors as published by the AAPM Task Group Report 96, wherein these conversion factors can readily be used um, and, uh, with the DLP to arrive at a, a estimated effective dose values. 
these conversion factors are, are provided for head, neck, chest, abdomen, and pelvic. For a chest, abdomen, and pelvic, the quick estimation is approximately about 1.5% of the DLP is a rough idea or an estimation for the effective dose value. Next slide. In this slide shown is a table of effective dose values for various CT protocols. Along with it, a range of effective values for each of these protocols are also shown as published in the literature. Next slide. Next slide shows a sample post-scan display from one particular manufacturers. In this particular uh, dose report shows the total MAS value used and different uh, scan series done along with just the CTDI and the DLP. Next slide. This slide shows a, a different CT dose report from a different manufacturers which is lot more detail which provides not only the type of series done in this particular exam along with this each of these line item also shown is the type of the, the, the selected KB, the selected MA, along with the CTDI volume and the DLP. This information can be used for, um, used for a number of purposes. One is calculating the effective dose in the organ doses, or they are also used for a quality control purposes and so forth. Next slide. Shown here is like a rough idea of how these information available can be used for calculating the effective dose for comparison purposes. As of now, the CT dose displays on the scanner is based on the standard 32 cm phantom and a 16 cm phantom for the body and the head. And the same thing is done for the pediatric protocols also. However, when the, for a pediatric patient, the display values has to be corrected for, um, for, this, uh, for uh, accommodating for the size um, variation. And that can be done in this using this particular table, wherein the conversion factor which is established for the adult uh, size are now corrected for the uh, different age group. This particular table provides the conversion factor for a corresponding age group, which can be then used with the displayed DLP to arrive at the effective dose values for a particular CT protocol. Next slide. As shown in the few slides, the post-scan display or the dose reports varies from manufacturer to manufacturers. There are no standard dose display right now. Even though structured dose reports are slowly beginning available with all the manufacturers, still for the user at the end of the scan, the, the display dose uh, information varies from manufacturer to manufacturers. However, it is important to understand what these dose displays are based on each particular manufacturer's and also understand some of the limitations. So why use CTDI wall? CTDI wall is not patient dose. It is a radiation output of a particular CT scanner. However, CTDI wall is very helpful in tracking across the protocol for quality control purposes. It is also helpful for comparing and contrasting CTDI or the radiation output for different protocols and settings. Next slide. In conclusion, the key dose descriptors in CT are CTDA wall and DLP. These dose descriptors can then be used for estimating some type of a risk assessment to the patient or also can be used for comparing across the protocols um, for quality control purposes. Overall, it is very important to understand various scan parameters which influences these dose descriptors. Thank you.